This is North Cap, the northernmost point in Europe in the Arctic Circle. I'm standing here and staring at an unlimited horizon, at this astonishing view. The only thing that separates me from polar ice is a body of water. My destination is Cape Town, 11,000 miles to the south. And to get there, I have to pass through 13 countries on three continents. But my journey hasn't started from here. My journey started four years ago when I was a financial analyst working in the city of London. I had a secure job, very good income, and I had all the things that usually define a happy person. But something was unfulfilled in my life, and that was my lifelong dream. All my life, I've been inspired by explorers and adventurers who surpassed seemingly impassable boundaries in the face of overwhelming odds. And it's been my burning ambition to one day setting off on my own extreme adventure. My comfortable existence, however, had been burying my ambition without me noticing. And going on a big expedition become such a distant idea. Until one day, while I was in Madagascar, doing some voluntary work in the very remote village, away from all the day-to-day -day distraction, a thought struck me that nothing could be worse than growing old, looking back, regretting not having done the expedition I had always dreamed of. From that moment, my life wasn't the same. I got back to London into my day-to-day -day life, to nine-to-five routine. But I wanted more. I wanted more out of my life. But I was unsure of my ability, and I needed to validate it. I needed to do something so big that the failure is guaranteed, unless I don't give it all I have. I decided to plan a journey. I started playing with different ideas. And I thought, I know, I'm going to cross the Sahara Desert on a bicycle. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's how I felt when I realized actually no one has ever done this before, which itself raised question. <laughs> Sahara Desert is as big as the United States and, or China, and is occupying pretty much most of North Africa. I wanted to do this, and I had no idea what is waiting for me. In order to prepare for this, I decided to get science behind ambition and teamed up with some leading experts in sports science, and they devised a plan for me and fitted around my busy schedule. It took me six months to get myself into the start line. In March 2011, despite all the odds, I set the world record for crossing the Sahara Desert on a bicycle in climate that considered as one of the most brutal on Earth for human survival, battling sandstorm, extreme temperature, and hunger. Up until today, no one has ever repeated that journey, and this feat remains unchallenged. I got back to London, to my day-to-day -day life, to my suit and tie, sitting behind a desk, and to my routine. But I thought to myself, if I've done that, what else I can do in my life? Exactly. I was craving for another expedition. I had itchy feet. This time, I decided on a, another bigger outrageous goal. I decided to cycle the north to south length of the planet in record time. 11,000 miles. And the last person who has done this took him th over 300 days to finish the journey. And I wanted to take it to a whole new level. I wanted to put it on the map as a new world record, and decided to do this in third of a time, 100 days. While I was preparing for this, a friend of mine, Stephen Pauly, has offered to join me, and we decided to do this together. 1st of August 2013, I resigned my job in the city, 
12th of August, we started our journey from the Arctic Circle. Temperature was minus two degrees. And before even we started our journey, I was covered with sweat. Fear of failure was the only thing I could have think of. I was overwhelmed by this 11,000 miles journey ahead of me. After a few miles, I was completely out of breath. I have to come off the bike and think it through. I couldn't continue thinking on 11,000 miles. I needed to think small. Rather than focusing on 11,000 miles, I have to focus on 110 miles today and just get to that daily target and carry on <coughs> every day another 110 miles, another 110 miles. And the strategy worked, but our expedition didn't start it easy. For 17 days throughout Scandinavia and Russia, we faced with a torrential rain. And believe it or not, we, we both accustomed cycling in the rain. But this was serious downpour. 12 hours every single day into that serious downpour. And there is no place to get dry. We carried on. We entered Russia. We faced another problem. Hard shoulders were covered by broken glasses. And we were getting punctures after punctures. In fact, in one day, we had eight punctures. And we had to fix them under the rain. And these distractions cost us lots of time. And in order to hit the daily target, we have to cycle through the night. Friction between me and Stephen started to grow. Our tolerance was so low that every single disagreement turned to huge blow-ups. And we were arguing. At some point, we couldn't stand each other anymore. We couldn't bear each other anymore. But there were days that we didn't talk to each other. But only one thing allowed us to pull together as a team, and that we always put our common goal ahead of our personal differences. Things got better. We speed up to, to, through Russia until we reached southern Russia. Police stopped us and warned us of a dangerous road ahead. Police told us, if you go ahead further, you're entering Dagestan. Do you know where are you going? This is the most dangerous place in the world. And imagine Russian police telling you this. <laughs> it was time to make a tough decision. Stephen decided to sidestep the region. And I decide to trust my instinct and carry on. I thought to myself, I'm just the scruffy, smelly cyclist who hasn't had a shower for the last 10 days. I mean, no harm to anyone. Why someone should attack me? But whoever we met in Russia warned us of going through Dagestan, you might not come out alive. This is the last outpost before Dagestan. The Russian police calling his higher rank, asking, oh, I've got this madman here who wants to go to Dagestan. I don't know what to do with him. I've never seen any foreigner want to go to Dagestan. Anyway, after a bit of a persuasion, I was allowed passage. As I was riding close to Dagestan, heart was pounding hard in my chest, fearing that I might become a target for violence. But yet, this whole expedition was all about conquering the unknown. And despite of my fears, I was committed to keep my head down and pedal all the way. The greatest part of this journey was the people that I met along the way. When you see the world at the speed of a bike, you experience the kindness, kindness of strangers, and all the stereotypes fall away. Despite ominous military presence and conflict, I've seen nothing but kindness from people of Dagestan. Got through Dagestan, joined by Stephen in Baku. Humbled by the experience, got through Azerbaijan fairly quickly, got through Iran, we get good food and roads were manageable and a good condition allowed us to reach southern city of Iran, Shiraz, in such a great evening, right on time to catch our flight to Egypt. 
finished our first leg of our journey on a high. So we were so sucked into our own little bubble that we actually didn't know what was going on in the world. We had to deal with day-to-day -day necessities, where to eat, where to drink. We entered Cairo in this situation. Egypt was burning in civil war. Seven o'clock in the morning, as soon as the curfew was lifted, we hit the streets of Cairo. Try to maneuver through the violence and conflict. Tanks everywhere, protesters in the streets, houses burned down, cars on fire. It was a scary situation. At some point, we got caught in the middle of conflict, and somehow we escaped the dangerous situation. We made it to Sudan. Peace and tranquil of Sudan. I love that country. <laughs> but cycling in Sudan was like cycling in a sauna. 45 degree temperature. And, and we're doing such a heavy physical activity. Fo finding food and supplies was extremely difficult. And after a few days, we lost so much weight. We made it to Ethiopia. Stephen was the first one to go down with food poisoning, and I followed <gasps> soon after. We were forced off our bike by diarrhea and vomit all the time. It was a bitter experience, but we carried on. Leaving Ethiopia behind, we entered Kenya. We immediately hit the worst gravel road I've ever cycled in my life. Four by fours were struggling in that gravel road, let alone two bicycles. Just cycling on that road was a hell of a job, let alone carrying 30 kilograms of equipment on the bike. It took us four days of real struggle to clear off that hard gravel. Finally, we made it to Equator. And that was the moment of celebration for us. We just realized how far we came. We left Arctic Circle, and we are now in Equator. We nearly cycled half the world. And that, re we realized how small we are. And that put things into perspective. But our celebration didn't last very long. 100 miles south of Nairobi, I was hit by a debilitating physical condition. And soon, crippling pain and raging fever forced me off the bike. I found myself being taken to the nearest hospital, which didn't la take long for the doctor to add to my food poisoning his frightening diagnosis that I'm burning up with malaria. For f that was a defining moment of my expedition. For four days in that basic clinic, I was burning up with high temperature. Just keep on going was the only thing I could think of. And stopping was the worst feeling. On day fifth, I received my last trip. At seven o'clock in the morning, two hours later, I was back on a bike pedaling towards Tanzania. <coughs> Entering Tanzania, we hit another gravel road, which reminded us of the battering we took in Kenya. However, my malaria-ravaged body no longer had the stamina to deal with that gravel. On particularly hard stretch, we ran out of water. For two hours, we were pedaling into that gravel in an intense heat. At some point, my vision went blurry, and I fainted. Next thing I know, I saw Stephen is dragging me under the shade of a baobab tree. It was a survival situation. We kept as still as possible until a 4x4 four four was passing by, came to rescue, and took me to the nearest town, to the nearest clinic, where diagnosis was heat stroke. In that moment, I was thinking to myself, I've been on the road for 70 days, and I find it very difficult. It was a very dark moment. I thought to myself, I'm such a loser. I don't have any friends. I look terrible. I've lost so much weight. Why don't, why don't you accept these challenges beyond you and find your way back to London? 
But there was this inner voice inside me telling me, although things are tough, but it's worth persevering. I reminded myself of the places I've been and the people I've met and realized how lucky I am, how privileged I am to be able to experience such an amazing adventure firsthand. I decided to listen to that inner voice and carried on. Things got better. As soon as we reached Zambia and Botswana, availability of food and supply allowed us to clear off those countries fairly quickly. We whizzed through them, got to South Africa, and finally, sign of Table Mountain appeared in distance. That was an amazing moment. In that moment, everything started to make sense. Just remembering arriving at Cape Town between our static supporter <coughs> and our friends more than made up for the hardship. A triumph conclusion after 102 days of grueling cycling. I could now look back at what was an incredible journey of taking on a dream which seemed way beyond me, but somehow I figured out how to make it happen. Struggling through and overcoming so many obstacles in this tough expedition has taught me if you persistently throw all your effort into a dream, sooner or later you will achieve it. It took me 102 days instead of original 100 days, but finally I got there. Also, I realized the value of taking risk. Leaving what was secure and comfortable behind and leaping into the unknown led me to experience true personal growth. Also, I learned that the growth coming from the adversity and challenges. If you have a dream, the biggest risk that you can possibly take is to play it safe. Thank you very much.